In today's video, we're gonna be talking about everything that you need to know that was said in the recent AMA about the upcoming playtests. Now, there's a lot of really cool information and some really leaky leaks that happened, and I'm really excited to talk about those and share my ideas about them today. But before we get too far in the video, I first wanna introduce myself if you haven't met me yet. So my name's Jake, and I make speculative yet very informative content on the blockchain MMO Mirandus. And I do this by taking all the information we've learned so far and breaking it down into small digestible videos like this one for you guys to watch. So if you're looking for more consistent Randus content updates, then hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you on this page again. If not, then I appreciate you stopping by and I hope to see you again sometime. One last really quick thing before we get into the video is at the end of the video, I'm, I'm actually going to include a project that I've been working on for a little bit. So as you guys know, uh, if you've been watching the channel, I've been taking some web development classes and for one of my projects, I actually made a uh, Miranda site, like a mock Miranda forged site. Now the, the site's not anything special. It's pretty much just an e-commerce page where you can go on, you can um, buy weapons, armor, and I actually made some kind of cool Miranda cards, uh, some trading cards as other items on the site. So if you want to check that out, stay towards the end. I'll show it or you can just click the link in my bio and check it out. But without further ado, let's get into the video. There was genuinely a lot of really cool information dropped yesterday, and I'm super excited to cover it in today's video, as I said previously. So I actually took some notes that are beside me. I'm going to be reading off of them in chronological order of, in how things happen and were talked about in the AMA, and I'm going to do my best to cover everything that was talked about and give my personal thoughts on it. So the first topic that was covered uh, that I thought was noteworthy, and this has been said previously, but... It just makes me excited hearing it every single time. So he says, in the next playtest, there will be gear crafting and there will be uh, beasts to kill. And they, they progressively get stronger, which is why you need to craft better and better gear, which is what I wish that they would have had a couple playtests to go or in this goblin playtest would have been amazing. So I'm super amped that they actually have it in this playtest because it's going to give us kind of an insight into how crafting is going to work because I think it's going to be a lot more complicated than than most other games, which I think makes the game even more unique and charming in a way. Now, this is something that I've wanted to happen for a long time, and I even talked about this in a couple videos, um, but I think it would be so cool if some of these weapons, maybe you could craft them all the way up to NFT tier. If you get a weapon that uh, you grinded for a ton in this playtest, maybe somehow you could turn that into an NFT, more of a commemorative NFT rather than an actual useful weapon in game so if i have a sword and i upgrade it you know to the max level in the play test i think it'd be really really cool if i had some sort of commemorative uh maybe an in-game item maybe a countdown or nft just to show that it i i participated in the play test and i did really well in the play test kind of like how they gave out the goblin titles in the previous play test i think that having some sort of commemorative something would be a really really neat idea the next bit of information that was covered was a little little sad but also i'm totally fine with it and i think most people are because we want the best for the game uh they had talked about previously putting out the tavern playtest in october which is this month and we're already halfway through october and we haven't got the playtest yet so they had mentioned holding off the playtest just a bit longer to uh, around December 1st is when was said, but you know how things go. It, it could get pushed back a little bit more, but the idea is to have it out by December 1st. And the reason being is so that they can cover or they can put more games into the play test because if they were to release it right now, they might only be able to put out a couple games. Whereas if they were to wait and hold it back, they could really make sure that it's polished and looks good while we actually play it. So again, I'm personally totally fine with that. I would much rather play a polished version and them give their best effort than, uh, you know, having several bugs. Then we get into some pretty cool stuff. So McCarthy talks about the idea of copper and copper is going to be, he called it the in-game throwaway currency and uh, copper isn't going to be on chain but it's going to be the currency of this tavern playtest. And daily, you log in, and depending on how many NFTs you have for Mirandas, you're going to get more or less copper. 
and this copper is what's going to be used in these games as rewards. He'd also mentioned that if you are a tavern owner, and I don't know how it's exactly going to work for this playtest, if all tavern owners are going to get it, if um, maybe there you have to go to a specific tavern and that tavern owner gets a percentage. But anyway, he had talked about the idea of a rake for tavern owners so that if games are played at your tavern, then you get a percentage of the winnings, which I think is really cool because there hasn't been any use for building NFTs yet in Miranda's or Land Deeds. So including tavern owners in this playtest, which I, I think is a, is a great idea, honestly. Now, it almost sounded like, and I think this is what he meant, is copper will still be around for the next playtest and maybe even the following playtest and potentially even when the game comes out. Now that's not confirmed, but the way he was talking about it, I think that, that might be a thing. Now I don't know how many coppers it's going to take to equal one gold, but it's still pretty cool the, the idea that you can earn money for Mirandas right now. He'd also mentioned that gold is more than likely going to be gala, the gala currency, which Again, I think is a really great idea because there is no, um, like in other games, you have to hold Gala to be able to place down a certain amount of NFTs. You have to have Gala power. But I don't think that that's going to be a thing in Miranda's. McCarthy had talked about that previously anyway, that he didn't think that, that was actually going to be a thing. So this will incentivize people to actually hold Gala and essentially do the same thing that Gala power would do because... Of course, everyone wants gold. This might actually even add more stability to the, the Miranda's coin, depending on how Gala does. And because I really don't think that Miranda's is going to be Gala's only successful game. He had also mentioned that there will be leaderboards this playtest, which is exciting. And I'm glad that they said that because last time we were told there wasn't going to be leaderboards. And no, technically there weren't, but I they did give out titles. And I'm super happy that they gave out titles, but I wish I would have known because I would have tried more. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. And it's exciting that there are going to be leaderboards. And McCarthy had said that the leaderboards are pretty much going to be who has the most copper, which I think is a cool idea. But I'm sitting back here thinking, man, I don't have a whole lot of Miranda's NFTs and I want to get on those leaderboards. How am I going to do that? Yes, I just have to be good at the table games. I'm, I'm, I don't know. And another thing on top of that is, and this is really, really exciting. He had talked about having a, um, a copper store that you can buy in-game cosmetics with. <laughs> that is extremely exciting. That was probably one of the highlights of the of the AMA. And they're not going to be NFTs. Instead, they're going to be account bound items. And the reason they're making them account bound rather than NFTs is because there's a lot of gambling laws that you have to abide by when you have real money at stake. And since copper is not really worth anything and you're not earning NFTs from it right now, um, that's, I think, how they can get around the idea of it being a gambling institution and not abiding by the gambling laws because technically there's no money at stake. So I love that idea. I think that that's super duper cool. You can earn like uh, hairstyles. You can earn beards. Um, there's even some talk. OK, this actually this is my favorite part of the uh, AMA. They talked about having some sort of mug uh, that you can earn somehow whether that be through copper in the store, whether that be achievement in the playtest, somehow numbered to say 1000 mug that can be earnable. And I want one so bad. <laughs> and I know lots of other people want it too because it's super, super cool looking. Like I don't drink, but still having an ale mug that I can pour some root beer in would be super, super fun. And just again, charming on top of that he even talked about putting a qr code on each of the mugs so that when you scan the qr code irl then it's going to give your account in mirandas that same mug to use in game that's just that's so cool we're we're i know that other games have that but it just seems like it's adding a little bit more depth into the game and also the community it's getting the community super hyped up for something as simple as just like a little bitty merch drop now the next topic is something i don't know if i'm reading too much into it or if i might have caught something but so it's taking a step back for a second in the last playtest, they had talked about doing a 
a voice changing feature where if you talk as a female orc, then in game, your voice changes to a female orc, which I think is super, super crazy to imagine that actually being in a game. Regardless, this playtest, they were talking about potentially doing a face tracking feature so that if you have your camera set up, maybe your camera could record your face and actually mimic your emotions while you're talking to people in game. And he said, we will have the voice feature. Now, I don't know by we will have the voice feature if that means just regular voice chat so that maybe it does track your face while you're talking in your normal voice or if he means the voice changing feature because I feel like saying we will have the voice feature is a little bit uh, like obvious like most games do have a voice chat so I don't know maybe I'm reading too much into that uh, but I think it'd be insanely cool if they did have a voice changing feature as well as a as a face tracking feature this next topic was actually pretty exciting as well so they had talked about the idea of having cosmetic dice and these dice could either be account bound or they could be potentially nfts now these cosmetic dice aren't going to provide any bonuses other than just looking cool but then again look at csgo knives go for like hundreds of thousands i think some might even go for millions of dollars knife skins so just having these cosmetics for Dice and Mirandas, I think is going to be kind of a cool idea. And also a bit of a flex. If you have some cool colors that you earned in this playtest that maybe two or three years down the road, you can kind of be like, yeah, I've got these Ruby Dice. Check this out. <laughs> Afterwards, they talked a little bit about the potential of having these tavern games on mobile. And McCarthy said he's not opposed to the idea. It's possible. It's going to be a bit of a tech lift for the team, um, but it is something that they could look into. But in my opinion, in, in in my imagination, I guess I don't see them doing that for this playtest. Um, they could do it in the future, though. I I definitely think that that's a possibility. But with the playtest coming up in a month or two, I don't imagine that they're going to do a like a whole nother branch and try and get it on mobile after that someone asked the question will games be nfts and mccarthy wasn't opposed to the idea because it'd be kind of cool to have some uh, rare games that only are playable at certain taverns which would drive business to certain taverns but the community it was a pretty like a 80 20 split probably on we don't want <laughs> nft games which I also understand because first and foremost, Miranda's is a game. It's not a, I mean, yes, they're trying to make it realistic, but if they're also making a game and if you make too many things rare and unobtainable for people, then it, it's going to seem kind of bland, you know? So I think that that's probably why the community was so against that. What do you guys think? Do you think the game should be NFTs or do you think that you should be able to just go into a tavern and play a game? And on top of that, one of the topics they talked about was the idea of going into a tavern and will you need to physically have someone in front of you to play a tavern game with somebody? Or could you walk up to the table, tap the table, and then load into a match with somebody from say a different tavern that's waiting in a queue in my opinion i think that we should probably do the latter and have have a queue and be able to play with someone from a different tavern because again this is a game Miranda's is a game and although realism is cool and fun it would just make it a little too much of a hassle sometimes i think if we were to try to include everything to make it realistic again what do you guys think on that do you think that uh do you think that there should be a queue where people can load into and play with people from different taverns or do you think that you should have a physical person in front of you to be able to play then another cool idea which has actually previously been talked about and i think that they probably will do this in the future i don't foresee it happening anytime soon but they had talked about the idea of having Legends Reborn as a tavern game in Mirandas, which I think makes perfect sense. Um, and I hope that they do do that because that would make Legends Reborn. I truly believe that will help to make Legends Reborn a more popular game, because if that becomes a tournament game in Mirandas, because that means you're including people from the Mirandas community into the Legends Reborn game. 
Now, obviously, there will be some crossover. Some people that play Mirandus will play Legends Reborn anyway. But like me personally, I'd much rather be playing Mirandus than Legends Reborn. But if Legends Reborn is in Mirandus, then I will definitely play Legends Reborn, especially if there's some Mirandus currencies on the line. Now, this next question was something that was asked several times, and I'm super glad that they answered it because uh, this, this poor dude really wanted it answered. But the question was, how long are day and night cycles going to be? And McCarthy didn't really give a complete straight answer. He said that they played with uh, different time lengths. And from what it sounded like, he was talking about them being pretty short. I think he had said like 10 and 15 minute cycles, and then they had talked about like 30 and 45 minute cycles or something like that um which i totally expected cycles to last much longer i was expecting like three hour day cycles and two hour night cycles or something like that but from what it sounds like it's going to be a lot shorter and again he said that they were playing with them so nothing's finalized uh but i think that longer cycles could be cool but i could also see that being a downfall because if you have long night cycles and someone truthfully cannot play in the night because they're not strong enough that's gonna kind of be a debbie downer on them you know they, they log in just to it being nighttime and you're like well crap i guess i can't play anything i can't go outside the town for two hours because not everyone's gonna be uh you know leroy jenkins and run out into the night not everyone has an elf so i can definitely see why they would choose to have shorter day and night cycles but also i think it'd be kind of fun to have longer day and night cycles too so it, they have to kind of find a good balance there. The next topic that was covered is another fairly controversial topic. I wouldn't call it super controversial, but they had talked about having gala music in tavern games. Now, I honestly, so I think that that's a neat idea, but I don't think that I like that. I think that long songs or exemplars should be the only ones that are able to play music in Mirandus. I think maybe having like maybe the BT orbs as a decoration would be kind of cool if they gave off some sort of music there. But it would it would feel kind of weird to have Snoop Dogg jamming in a tavern. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, because that would kind of really throw off the vibe that I think McCarthy's going for. So I hope that they don't do that. I hope that uh, exemplars are the only ones that are able to play music in game. And, you know, that brings up another question. Will there, and someone asked this in the Discord. I don't remember who it was. So sorry if you're watching this video, like, let me know it was you. Um, but someone asked if there was going to be some sort of way for people to craft music in Mirandas. Like, can you write songs in Mirandas? That's a fun idea. Um, it's going to be uh, that's going to make things a lot more difficult but i also think that that's kind of a neat idea so i don't know now the final two comments that were said to wrap up the entire ama was number one there will be a survey sent out more than likely that assesses people's opinions on different topics inside the game which i think is really cool I love that they're surveying the community and taking the community's thoughts and ideas into consideration because most games don't do that. They're like, okay, this is this and you're stuck with it. But instead, the Mirandus dev team wants to do exactly what we want, which is super promising for the future because I don't know. I feel like that shows a lot about what the team actually wants is they want what's best for us. And the last thing that was talked about is there's now a tavern tab in the Mirandus uh, main webpage, Mirandus.game, which I think is cool. They've got the rules to some of the tavern games that you can go ahead and read through. They've also got some info on it. It's a really cool page. It's, it's exciting that they're kind of teasing us with this a little bit. And yeah, I'm just overall super excited for this playtest. Now, I also, I also want to say this before we end. There is a difference between this tavern playtest and the, the playtest where we're going to be crafting gear and fighting. So it, we're not going to be able to do both right now. I don't know how long this tavern games tab is going to be open. This could be something that's actually open from when they release it to the game release. That would be ideal. That would be pretty cool. But um, we're not going to be able to kill anything in December, sadly. I think that that next one is coming up uh, early next year. I think that they had talked about doing January, but I'm not positive. Don't quote me there. That pretty well sums up everything that was said in the AMA and my thoughts on the, the topics. 
hopefully I did it all justice. Hopefully I said everything correctly. Um, I do want to include one last thing before we end the video. And that is if you guys are looking for a home inside of Brandis, if you're looking for a community of people that is super like-minded and loves Mirandis so much and <laughs> pretty much just talks Mirandis 24-7, check out the Masters of Materium. They're a super cool guild with a ton of assets in the game that I think is going to make a positive influence on the game. All the people in there want what's best for the game and they're not just looking out for themselves. So if you want to be a part of a really cool community, then join the Masters of Materium. I'll include the Discord link in my description. Okay, so as promised, before we end the video, I wanted to show you guys what I built. You know, I want to show you guys my Mirandus Mock Forge e-commerce page. So as you log on, this is the first screen you see. You see a login screen. Okay, nothing special. We don't need to log in. We can actually click this to skip that, which is kind of neat. And then here we are. We're actually on the, the page. So I've showed some people, but not everybody. I actually made some kind of cool Mirandus cards. So I have my own card, Hammer, the Everflow. Um, and, and the stats on them, they're all just made up stats. They, they don't mean anything. It was kind of inspired by D&D. &D, and I wanted to include some people from the Mirandus community. So I have Captain Nero, because everyone knows Captain Nero. And Seafarer fits him perfectly then we have uh punjab the goblin king he's the guy that uh punjab is actually the one that won the goblin king title from the last play test and i thought that was kind of a, a a neat little addition and then we have the minotaur king he's a little bit more expensive than everybody else and the prices are they don't actually mean anything you can't really buy anything um it's kind of cool the weapons are just kind of miranda's themed nothing nothing special here but yeah, I, I thought it was kind of a neat site. What you can do is you can just go through, you can add items to your cart, um, you can increase, remove, you know, just, just a basic web page. You can pay for everything here with uh, virtual money, fake money. I should have made this into like Bitcoin or something like that instead of US dollar. Got a currency switcher. Maybe I should add Bitcoin on there. Uh, but yeah, thought it was kind of fun. I figured you hardcore Miranda's people would enjoy it. So, but yeah, I think that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.